What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. Hey, welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thanks for tuning in, watching, or listening. Doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Guys, this is a special episode. So special because we are joined by our very awesome friend and partner, Justin from Red Zone Gaming on Instagram. Justin, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you guys today? Very, very well. Super. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, first of all. We really appreciate it. I know it's kind of a long period of time, and we've had our fair share of setup issues as we've gone along, but yeah, we got it all working. <laughs> we're here. Not a problem. I'm uh, super excited to be here. Well, very excited. We're certainly thankful to have you. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're omitting a few things because of having a guest on, so just so you guys are aware... Crackerback's not going to be happening. We do still want to thank Grand Slam, though, of course, as always. Obviously. Appreciate um, you sponsoring the podcast. Please don't lament too much. No. We will crack some packs later. We'll crack later. some packs later. Uh, we also do have a giveaway going on for Commander 2019. Uh, if you're interested, Ooh. you can win yourself your choice of any of the four decks, uh, and we will send it to you free if you're inside the U.S. If you're not... Uh, we'll work something out with you. We'll we'll make sure that you get uh, some kind of prize that we can actually get to you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes. We have had the question: if if you're outside the U.S., can we actually? And it has win? been hard before to get. Yeah, that that's been a whole thing. We've has learned been. a lot. Doing we have, this podcast. man. It's been crazy. Uh, but so enter that. Uh, it is a YouTube giveaway. Uh, the winner will be chosen on the 26th, mm -hmm. Monday the 26th. Uh, Randomly, so, all you thirsty boys. All you thirsty please boys. Please pick me. It resolves. <laughs> no, it's random. We have to be fair, impartial. Exactly. We love you all the same. Except for you. We love you the most. That was for that one. And on that note... <laughs> Justin, this is what this normally is like, in case you weren't sure. Um, no, it's fine. And for everybody that's listening, I've entered every single contest, and I've yet to win one. But You sure will I one am, day. So. You won, won the contest the of being prize. on the podcast. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Stop complaining. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, okay, so the reason we have Justin on this episode is because we wanted to take some time and talk about being mm. a magic creator. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. We'll kind of cover a little bit of each, most likely. Um, and Justin, you're probably better prepared than us, which is great. Uh, and we then always prepare so we well. We prepare so well. <laughs> How dare you? I'm medium prepared at best. That's definitely more than us. We um, are. <laughs> yes. Then, We're very rare prepared. Very <laughs> rarely prepared. Uh, and then we will also uh, be talking a little bit about. Hopefully, if we have time, we'll be talking about wizards, their decision making processes, things like that. Things that we like, don't like, all that stuff. Ooh, uh, I see I the. I can Perfect. feel the tension building. We're about to. No. Um, okay. Uh, good, restraint, good restraint. We will good restraint. start still with our random card of the day because who doesn't love a random card of the day? Because don't mess so with tradition. Our card, I love it. Our card here is Brindle Shore. Brindle Shout. 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 Excuse me. Shout. I misread it. Ah. Do you know yes. what this is, Do you Justin? know this card off the top yep, of Yep, I can tell you without even looking. Dude. Hit me. It is a uh, creature type boar or pig. Wow. Yes. And boar. Uh, one green and a colorless. It yes. is a 1-1. One, one. Yes. And when it dies, you put a 3-3 three, three big pig into play. Dude, <laughs> look at this, Boys man. and girls, that is 100% what it amazing. is. That's uh, amazing. Yep. Bonus points if you know what set it's from. Oh, um, I own the copy from Plane Chase. Okay, I so. think that was the first print. Yeah. yeah, so that's yeah. There was Plane Chase that. 2012, and then it was reprinted in the anthology, and it was also online in Vintage <laughs> Masters, which is interesting. Yep. Yeah, um, I I played the crap out of that boy. Yeah. So, well, you've played the crap out of it. What do you think of it? I personally liked it. It's an early uh, creature that can make a nice size token. Um, yep. I used to use it with things like Parallel Lives, and of course, Doubling oh. Season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's really kind of funny because one of the things that like not a lot of people think about is there's that card Flame Shadow Conjuring, where whenever you play a creature, yeah. I think it's Flame Shadow Conjuring, whenever you play a creature, you can pay a red to create a copy of it, it has haste, and then it's sacrificed at the end of the turn. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I do know so what you're talking about. if Dude, you play one of these and then copy it, though. 
Or the same thing with like the oh, Bramblewood so Sovereign. You can make yeah. a copy of the creature, and then when it dies, you yeah. can get it. And if you've got doubling season effects out, you can all of a sudden just barf out a horde Dude. of pigs. All right, I'm in. It's like the last scene of Willow all over again. <laughs> I love oh, it. I it's love the, that. It's those 30 to 50 wild hogs that lady was talking yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right there. You can, you can slide in a little image on the YouTube video of this. Of yeah. Just her going, pigs! <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I like this card. Uh, I did not know about all these combos with it, but even on its own, I think it's a sweet little was two all drop. That, was all that limited viable as well? Or was it in standard at the time only? Well, oh, well chase, because so it was plain chase, it was right. just a not casual limited. format. Yeah, that's right. Um, but still yeah. really, really plain cool. Plain chase got like, wild. Yeah, plain chase was some cool stuff. We tried to play it one night in my apartment. Just Did you? Yeah. I didn't meet a few that. buddies. No, it was with, it was Sans Kevin, actually. Oh. This, is bef- this is pre-podcast. This is well, ages ago. I'm glad ago. you invited me. Kevin. Plane chase is a lot of fun to mix with other stuff. <laughs> yes, we played. Uh, oh, this is gross. We played Commander Plane Chase. Oh god, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's, Commander Plane Chase is good. It's loads of fun, but it got wild. Yeah, I bet. Just bonkers. Yeah, that still sounds fun though. It's good. Um, it's a good time. Well, awesome. I really like that. Look at that. And Justin knew it offhand. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Well, I guess we can jump right in. Uh, yeah, being an MTG it. creator is kind of the broad topic here, but yeah. um, I think the most apt place to begin would be how do you start being a sure. YouTube creator? Like, how do you start into the whole market of MTG creation, stuff like that? So, Justin, mm. I'm going to hand this over to you as an intro for like everybody who doesn't know. How did you start kind of getting into that realm? What do you do? So, What's your specialty? What was that? What do you do? What do you what do you like to do with creation? Well, what I what stuff? I like to do now is Instagram. I really liked Instagram. Um, I actually started doing content creation for Magic uh, a long, long time ago. I don't think you can even find the podcasts anymore. But we had a um, podcast called the Manacast back in the original Ravnica block. Ooh. Oh, and, favorite set. Um, it largely was just me and about four friends sitting inside of a very busy Perkins, and <laughs> we were talking about like what happened after Friday Night Magic. Uh huh. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun, and we talked about combos, we talked about card ideas, and then that was a lot of fun. Um, actually, the guy who kind of did the whole thing, he's now actually a really good. Uh, YouTube creator mm-hmm. uh, Derek Knabenbauer. He also does uh, Twitch streams and stuff like that for video games. So that's he's, cool. he's really awesome. But we we started off that way, and then I kind of broke off, and I did YouTube for a little while. Um, it was fun, but I really don't like any of the post production stuff, so I'm super lazy at that. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Which is why Instagram's my favorite. I can literally just post a picture, copy some tags, make a message, and then send it off on its way. <laughs> yeah. As that's an old fair. man, that's the best way for me to, to continue. <laughs> no, no, to produce you and content. I are in the you and I are in the same vein. If there's too many words, too many details, we'll just get a little distracted. That's why I'm here. Yeah. That's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> that's, that's far from the truth. But, but um, I did do Tumblr. Uh, I was MTG deck check back then. I basically would let people send me deck lists, and I would just review them and give them upgrades. And uh, that's a good everything idea. Was, that is a good idea. I like that. I'm right. That I know that's really a thing good. that like, I got up a to lot like of people do. 600 but... some followers at one point. Yeah, yeah. And that nice. Was pretty fun. Nice. I'm going to tuck that idea away yeah. for the future. I'm sorry if. if... Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. If you feel we're stealing. I mean, I still um, go on there from time to time, but yeah. like, I just don't have the time to be that dedicated to it. Sure. Unfortunately. That is the thing I feel like with stuff like that. You really have to set time aside mm-hmm. to like, okay, I need to spend 20 minutes looking at this deck and then sure. come up with cliff notes on what you should do to either change it or not you know what i mean like yeah that's a big time consuming thing but e- i do like editing. that idea for content like that's super cool yeah editing the decks that i could do really quick because i mean right you didn't even finish brindle show and i could already tell you what it was yeah. it's the thing that my wife hates the most is that i can remember every single magic card and what it does and what set it's from yeah, but do that. i can't remember what i was supposed to pick up at the, the grocery store and Dude. Um, first world problem so like someone could send me a deck list and i could look through it and i could already say cut 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 i don't even have to look up the cards half the time and (laughs) um but typing it all out and that that's really where i started getting really lazy about it yeah 
No, that's always the not fun side of the content creation. And I think that kind of brings up a point, which is like, because we've run into this a million times where we have this idea or this content stream that we're like, yeah, we'll do a card spotlight video, for instance. We oh, we tried that for a while. Yeah. And that was really fun, actually. I yeah. liked the recording process and the editing and all that stuff, but it was so time consuming. It was. For like a that, five minute video. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, it just wasn't worth the, the we payout. Spent, you know mm, what I mean? Like, it was yeah. very, very fun. And given more time, it would be something that I would say, mm. let's revisit. And we've had multiple things. That's just yeah. one example. But like with the time that is needed to like edit all that together, record all that, get us together, which lately that is its was own, tricky. It's yeah. an issue. Yeah. Um, sure. It there are a lot of things in the background of being an MTG creator that I think because pe- when we first started, I was like, oh, I want to start an Instagram, and yeah. it's like. I just post cards and it's easy. Right. Well, it's not really just posting. I mean, if you can do that, you can get away with that and it works just fine. But if you really want to use it as like a business tool and push people to different places and do different stuff like that, like we do giveaways a lot as a avenue to push people elsewhere. Um, as, as well as just a way of giving back to people, which is, I think, kind of the motto of what we want to do. But like, it's, there's so much more that goes into it. And I mean, mm-hmm. the good thing about it is because of all the platforms that are out there nowadays, it's like you can take or leave as much as you want. Right. Like, right. It's kind of nice because if you don't really feel like doing this as like a full time thing or you're not trying to make money off of it, you're not trying to do this like crazy, like you don't have to. Right. But mm-hmm. if you really want to, then there's a lot of work yeah. that goes involved. And I think, you know, sticking around for a number of years is very difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. I think um, Instagram is definitely the easiest to do it with. Yeah, um, definitely. YouTube is tricky. They're, yeah. YouTube's real tricky. I mean, yeah, it's a, unless, it's, you, unless you like get, get the, the uh, filthy, filthy casual, casual. Like, if you just <laughs> recorded nothing but like one shot videos and yeah. just like screw editing, here it is, take it yeah. or leave it. And that's <laughs> true. Like, true. If I ever go back, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to be like <laughs> one shot this. If Dude, I you need up, to go I back. Well, up. look, there's, I mean, Strictly Better MTG is one of my favorite YouTube, oh, know. like, magic content creators. He's always yeah. got really interesting things to say, and yeah. all of it's pretty relevant. Um, a lot of decks, cool decks he showed yeah, me. Yeah, he does do We a took cool stuff. Uh, a Frank Sanity build deck from him and played it yeah. for a while. Okay. Um, but this guy, that's all he does. It's like a one-shot. He sits on his couch or something yeah. like that. Any like. editing is, like, is just a card yeah. and he's talking over it and that's it but he's like he's like a pretty well-known yeah like, like he's one of the go-tos yeah that's exactly YouTube. what i would do yeah. yeah i would love that because yeah i mean especially with you know i've been playing since literally the day ice age came out oh wow, wow. and Long time ago. so like i've got a lot of experience and a lot to share which oh, yes. is yeah yeah is good but it's difficult kind of getting that out there and even more so just kind of getting that reputation where people are like okay he actually knows what he's talking about versus just some dude that got a jace the mind sculptor and now thinks that he's ready for you know dude, modern that, ptqs for life uh, that, that was me back in the day <laughs> um not anymore i hope but that was definitely me back in the day i pulled a jace and i was like oh I have the best card in magic. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just like 12 or something like this yeah. is clearly not uh, correct. But um, yeah, so the yeah. avenues for, for content creation are really interesting, I think, because yeah. you do see what, what I think is really interesting is the variety of content that you see out there um, yeah. where it, there's like card market on Instagram, for instance, and they yeah. just do like card stats, like pricing, things like that, price differences. And like that's sure. their go to thing. And then you have people yeah. who do alter only stuff. Yeah. And then you have people that just literally will just post cards. You know what yeah. I mean? Like whatever card they open that day, they post it. And it's like it's, they're varying success rates and things like that. But I just think it's interesting the diversity that comes out of just yeah. a card game. Well, there's so many there's so many things to consider with Magic yeah. as a yep. I guess community, yeah. so to speak. Um, that I think it it's its own kind of ecosystem. That there's not yeah. one place to go for all this stuff. The mm-hmm. the biggest that comes to mind is Goldfish, but yeah, even then, like that stuff kind of gets stale and mm-hmm. so you you can look elsewhere and i think there are a lot right, of indi- right. there's independent creators i think who do uh a better job than some of the well i don't say better but a great job compared to some yeah. of the big name uh creators and stuff um well i and, think what's nice too is you don't have to really pick and choose anymore no definitely like, not the you can find anything you can find anything really. wherever and like right. you 
you can find your your information from five, ten, however many different sources, and it's fine. Like there, nobody really. Sometimes. Well, <laughs> as long as you stay off Reddit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, oh, Reddit. <laughs> but in general, like you can you can kind of like if you're looking for commander stuff, for instance, yeah. you can go to EDA Trek, or you can go to your favorite yep. YouTuber, you can go to you know different people, but you don't have to like. I mean, EDA track is probably the biggest. Oh, but yeah. like More numbers for me, please. Yeah, but like you don't yeah. have to pick and choose anymore. Sure. Like The competition side of things is not as relevant as just building the community as a whole anymore, How do you in mean? my opinion. How do you mean? As a creator, mm -hmm. I'm happy to push people, like Justin, for instance. I would love to push people to Justin and get people I to follow him because ideally it builds up the community and ideally Justin would do the same back. And it's like there's right. this sense of like camaraderie until you find people who are like super split like well that's the thing right like the mtg headquarters i was gonna stuff say there's like a magic is a mixed bag in all respects in terms of people what content they want to create in terms of how supportive they are of each other in terms of yeah. how positive their influence right. is yeah uh it, it's a mixed bag so. it is a bit but nope, i think I as agree. long as you keep that attitude the positive attitude it's fine like yeah you just don't have to Include yourself well, with the others. <laughs> but I think that's fair for a lot of... I mean, you can honestly you oh, can yeah, say that about that's anything. That's YouTube creation, content creation Period. nowadays in yeah. general. Like, there's, there's oh, because yeah. of the platforms, there's it makes toxicity it easier. There's everywhere. Yeah. It's like, it, the internet just makes it harder to hide. And yeah. so if we're all that's, coming together, bringing our stuff out, I yeah. mean... That's very true. You know. And you are putting yourself out there when you do stuff Definitely. like YouTube creation in particular. I mean, Instagram, you're just kind of posting pictures. Like, mm -hmm. you can kind of get away with hiding behind it a little, sure. but like especially on youtube and justin you know this um yep. like you're pretty much putting yourself out yeah. there for people to critique and we've had it on our stuff multiple times the latest thing was when we uh, gave away the atraxa altar yeah uh people got really mad because i called it an altar in the giveaway not a proxy yeah which i uh, get okay technically it is a proxy i can understand that it's but one person was like really butthurt about it <laughs> and i'm like dude like okay that's fine I, and i was like if you don't want to enter nobody's making you enter <laughs> like, yeah yeah um because he was like i'd be really mad if someone like if or if i spent like 30 dollars on this altar and got a proxy instead i'm like well, you're not no spending, spending 30 dollars <laughs> and right. then he was like nobody mentioned money i'm like you just did i don't know what you're talking about um so yeah. again, well again and as that's what i'll say yeah. as wider your audience is as there well there you go i don't know if you've yeah. ever had this kind of issue but I actually have. Um, I have a, a, a person that I've worked with on Instagram a, a couple of times. And can I name drop or no? Should I not name Do it. drop? I won't. Go for I don't it. Care. Who cares? Um, <laughs> anyway, his name's uh, on Instagram is Atomic Ashes. And he does oh, yeah. really clean. And I actually did a YouTube video on some of his proxies. Mm -hmm. But I watched he had video. made a gorgeous uh, proxy of Atraxa with the Phyrexian text on it. Oh, dude! And yeah, it's it's gorgeous. He made it's on that. my Instagram. Yeah, I've seen you can go it. look great. at it. It's and really I did a good. giveaway for it, and like so many people, like as many people that entered it, messaged me and said, "I can't believe you're just supporting thieves in Magic." And yeah. I was like, "Whoa, bro, calm down!" Like I got so many unfollows and bans, like blocks from that. It was, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's dumb. Like. It's and I was like, this is a proxy. I'm not telling you this is the real card. No. That's dumb. Yeah, somebody has posted on our stuff, too, and said, like, this altar or proxy stuff needs to stop and, like, all this. And I'm like, it's an expression of the game. Like, yeah. it's an altar. It's a proxy. It's fine. Like, yeah. who cares? Like, people... We're not selling them as real cards. We're not even selling no. them. Like, yeah, you're giving away for speaking, free. Like, that's absolutely... They're like, being yeah. given I mean, away. Like, they they're not being paid for i don't yeah. understand why people are butthurt about that That's, kind of stuff yeah and i think as yeah. long as you put on there you know not for sale and yeah. you know you do something where it's very obviously not a real card yeah you know i mean as long as you're not trying to fool people i mean there's tons God, of people no, out there putting no. stuff on ebay that are saying it's legit cards yeah and and that printing problem. process is amazing yeah and sure. like, it's getting closer. I'm sorry, but I'd rather play uh, with some of those proxies than this really terrible altar I tried to do of a lotus petal. So. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, 
I, I like just watch, yeah. just like seeing what alters come up. Not to harp on the alter thing. No, we can move well, off of that. I, but... I think it's a big part of content creation. Yeah, especially it is. like if you're just dipping your toes into what what's on Instagram. Yeah, pretty cards are like the first oh, yeah. thing to find. Well, it's fun and like one of my uh, good partners is a uh, he he does alters and it's absolutely amazing work. His stuff yeah. is just fantastic. So uh, well, such a big part of the game, Magic in general, is the art. Is the artwork? Yeah, like, I mean, it's huge. Yeah. If you commission these crazy talented mm-hmm. artists to put their work on your card to yeah. be sold to billions of people i feel like someone's gonna take their own expression and yeah you know yeah, yeah. take their spin on the card i mean you I open like, yourself up that's, yeah that's just what it amounts to I mean, well i guess anyone could say, take that and say oh it's wizard's fault that people make fake cards but that's not what i'm saying well, i'm saying no. people will want yeah. to be a part of the artistic process yeah of course why not do you think that because of the increase in alters in general is part of the reason why they're doing all these experiments with new frames oh i think so i, I think, know we're jumping ahead about wizards but i that's I think no, no, that's okay so um, part of it. i think so i mean it's <clears throat> someone gets very excited when they have a unique thing yeah that's a part yeah. of i mean you look at games like league of legends or starcraft you can you spend 10 15 dollars on a digital skin for your character yeah. that yep. changes nothing about the game yeah, in most cases, but changes nothing about the game. <laughs> uh, there's really, well, I'm not going into it. Yeah, anyway, it's a whole other so, thing. <laughs> but like, people want to be unique. They want to like feel like they, their their own. I don't know. Well, it's their own unique is, take on right. the card, and like, right. I right. think I think it's a bit of a mixed bag. In regards to your your question, Justin, like, I think on one hand, I think Wizards is like, yeah, we'll try different card frames, inspire that creativity, and I think that's great. On the other hand, I think it's their own creativity just coming out that sure. they're just saying, well, oh, our yeah. marketing stuff is yeah. just let's make let's make the card frame reflect what the card is doing versus just saying, well, here's another keyword. You know what I mean? Not like, sure. it's it just makes it look a little nicer. It yeah. gives them the play that okay we're we're doing a little bit more sure. for our game nerds like cool stuff yeah we, we like making cool stuff yeah and i feel like they get to try it and then <clears throat> we do too i don't think they're doing it to encourage any kind of alters i don't think intentionally way. oh no i yeah, agree yeah. yeah but it i think it definitely they see that people like it yeah well, right some there's people a market don't. Go some people it. don't but. right <laughs> exactly there's yeah that's a great point. yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do think it inspires that creativity for sure. And you can yeah. see it even in like atomic ashes, like you were saying, like I've looked at some of the, uh, proxies that he's done recently and he does like the, the spell book card frame on a lot of stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, and it looks super good. Like yeah. I love it. Um, but I mean, just being able to take that card frame and apply it to a different card is in it in its own way. It's That's differently. Awesome. You That's know, it's cool. different, but creative. So I like that. Oh yeah. If I could have all of my lands be the Ixalan like treasure map frame yeah wouldn't that be cool yes that's that's my dream like Like, one day when i've just got like (laughs) just i'll make you that um that's a good idea yeah that is awesome and i think to people's point like you do atraxa is an expensive card yeah like to get to get and pay for so Mm -hmm. i think that if someone were to if two people were to bring an atraxa deck to an event and someone has a fake atraxa yeah i feel like that would feel like pretty bad for that would it. feel bad but it's also right. not legal and right that's play. the other thing is so in your, it's like in your casual play group i think we've talked ca- about it yeah that's the whole that's the market for this stuff is right. like right yeah it's just the casual group right. or it should kitchen, be kitchen tables only but <laughs> yeah i mean kitchen tables only but like your casual commander group if they are like really butthurt that you have this Atraxa altar, maybe you need a different playgroup because like <laughs> yeah, no that's kidding. a little overboard. Like it's just a yeah. casual game. Yeah. Like who yep. cares? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's just for fun. And um, my my biggest beef about that always has been like on Magic Arena or not Magic Arena, Magic Online. Mm. I have a collection that just has one copy of all the cards I've wanted, and I can switch them in and out of decks really easily. But a lot of times with Paper Magic, you can't do that. Yeah, right. And so. You know, you might have an Atraxa, but maybe you want an Atraxa inside your Jota deck. Yeah. And so you want to have it be part of the 99, but you don't want to have to unsleeve that or, heaven forbid, get the ugly Dragon Age copper sleeves for every single one of your decks. And um, my buddy, he did that. So it, it just drives me nuts. And I'm like, how do you even know if you have the right cards in your deck right now? Yeah. But 
But I mean, that's that's something to take into consideration is like people who play the game in a different way, like on Magic Online, they don't have to go through the same financial strain that someone does in paper. Paper is already more expensive than online is. And, um, you know, why why limit somebody with that? Like if they own the card, then that's fine. Or maybe they don't want to go to, you know, Las Vegas for the the Magic Fest and they don't want to bring those. Uh, 20 copies of something yeah. you know mm-hmm. whatever it might be that's fair accessibility no, has always been a consideration for magic yeah um and yeah. Any, anything with collecting and, mm-hmm. and an expensive product definitely but magic especially yeah uh that's why we see a bunch of reprints yeah a lot of fun cards yeah, uh, yeah. just because the you know the product's not out yeah you know we need it to be except accessible for my girl people. dio chan i need a reprint of her bad <laughs> there's all there we have our pet list yeah although it's been whittled down a Actually, it has recently. Um, Ooh, what's your number one on your pet list? Ooh. Ooh. I said we had a pet list. What is our number one? Because I'm calling you out. <laughs> you are calling us out. Well, no, we had... um. God, Noble Hierarch was on. Noble Hierarch is a big one. For a little oh, okay. while. It was, yeah. Uh, um, and then... Uh, our... Everyone thought she'd be in Modern Masters. This is our mini game. I can never remember a card's name, and Kevin remembers it for me. Uh, D- describe it. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can. Modern do it. Masters, white one, colorless one, white fetches artifacts. Oh, uh, Stoneforge. Thank you. Stoneforge, Stoneforge is also okay. on there. Uh, Stoneforge, yeah, that's on there. But her legality is is another question. But I want her to be reprinted. Yeah, it's on my pet list for unbanning as well. Really, but... those when? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it'd be interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I lived through idea. Stoneforge Standard. I mean, it was annoying, yeah. but it wasn't unbeatable. And I think yeah. with what's out there nowadays, like that's she'd be totally fine modern legal. That's the thing. Is that's, that's a lot of stuff can kill a germ token now that it's kind of okay. Mm-hmm. But because I mean, she gets Batter Skull, right? Batter yeah. Skull's the problem. Yeah, not Stoneforge technically. Right, but, it's the enabler. But, that's the same thing like if they you know bring her back exactly ban the thing that's the problem it's just like what they did with hogak where they got rid of it from below oh hogak (laughs) that was a fun week i'm loving this new uh where people will edit the text on cards as a meme and throw it up there oh yeah 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 so the hogak the the hose mad is one of my favorites now (laughs) it's just talking about all the hogak haters Uh, uh, that deck was sweet, but yeah, it was way too good. R.I.P. Well, uh, Hogak is still kind of really good. Oh yeah, Hogak's still great. Bridge from funny. below. Was I've good, always but hated it was Bridge piece. from Below, so when they banned it, I was like, like "Good, it needed it. Like yeah. it was a real person. It finally got the bitch slap that it deserved." <laughs> I really like. Yeah, Justin, we disagree. I really like Bridge. He from loves below. Bridge. <laughs> Kevin, f- d- Kevin loves any like dirty. Yeah, I'm the guy you don't want to play against. No. Not because I'm Awful. good. I'm not a good player necessarily. That's not. I, I just like that. I That's like really true. jank decks that are stupid. You don't like no. You don't like jank decks. You like decks that can win instantly. Well, from yeah, no but... way. Just all of a sudden, hey, I, I won. Yes. Or just like Locky. Like I loved the Lantern Log deck when it first came out. Yeah, and, like, he's all that, that kind stuff. of person. Yeah, and okay. he likes. He likes Storm, which a bunch of people like Storm. Storm but Storm is my modern deck. That's the only yes. one. Yeah, is your modern right. deck? I'm in. Yeah. Oh, you're bold. I like it. I played. I played Storm <clears throat> back in uh, the Kamigawa Time Spiral oh, yeah. standard, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I played Dragon Ignite Storm Memories. Back then, was that the big card? Then, uh, and then I switched to blue white control, but yeah. that's another story. <laughs> Man, um, yeah, it's that, dirty. I yeah, the dirty decks are the fun decks in my opinion. They are pretty fun. They that's fun. fair. They don't always work, and that's a bit of a risk when you no. take them. No, um, but that's okay. It's a little was more. Is that because you cast bridge from below? Is that why? <laughs> no, I was never that bad, <laughs> Justin. Thank you though. Um, <laughs> Everybody who really appreciates how stupid bridge from below is will laugh at that. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, okay, getting back on to, like, content creation, things like that. Justin, we kind of talked a little bit about, like, challenges, and for you, you said the kind of back-end work stuff and, like, the the writing down of all that stuff and the recording and post-production. But aside from the post-production stuff, what did you find was the biggest thing, just, like, getting into content creation? Was there a big hurdle? Was Was it just easy? I mean... Well, so, I guess for me, like, the Tumblr... I, I use Tumblr because that was the first, I don't want to say success that I really felt, sure. but 
you know, it was more successful. I was on there daily. I was doing memes. I was doing stupid stuff. Hmm. And I was also doing a lot of really good creation where I literally would go to the local game store. I'd say, hey, give me your deck. Let me write it down. And I'm just going to do a deck tech on it. And then yeah. eventually people started sending me their deck lists. That's cool. That's um, really cool. Yeah. And it was, it was really cool. Like I would get, like, I remember one day I did a commander challenge where I was, you know, like, Hey, give me your, I think it was, I want to say it was Golgari builds. Um, because the commander decks had just come out. Mm-hmm. And so there was, you know, the Golgari builds and how can you take this and turn it into you know, decks with like Damia or the Mimeoplasm. And I got like 25 <laughs> decks in like two hour span. That's Whoa. wild. And, wow. and I was like, I don't even know where to start. And I just literally put a message out there. I'm like, I got way too many decks. I'm rolling a D20. One of y'all is about to get lucky. And, and, and that was it. But I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. But the thing that I think is the biggest step for people who are just going to start getting out into content creation is they've already got an idea in their mind about what a successful content creator looks like. Mm-hmm. And they really need to you know, understand and come to grips with the fact that they're not going to be that overnight. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, um, like, I like to use the Game Nights as a, as a cool reference, yeah. especially for like EDH players, because Game Nights is like the epitome of what a perfect content creation for a game of VDH looks like. Yeah. yeah. And what I don't think a lot of people realize is that Josh Lee Kwai and Jimmy Wong have a whole team of people that work on that. It's not yeah. just oh, yeah. them. Well, and Josh and Lee Kwai, like, cut... He did, like, trailers for Star Wars and stuff like that or something. Yeah. And He's, then Jimmy is, like... production for a while. Jimmy does audio production and does right. actual acting. So, like... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and that's just it. But, you know, you it's good to have an aspiration, but it's yeah. also good to have realistic you know, reflection on yourself. Like, I know for a fact that I'm probably never going to hit 2,000 followers on Instagram. And I'm okay with that because my goal isn't to have the biggest Instagram following. It's to produce content that both I enjoy producing and hopefully 66 to 69 people will enjoy it and like it. And then, yeah. And well, and I good. think... You touch on the biggest point, which is just creating stuff that you enjoy creating. And I mean, yep. that sounds really gimmicky. I get it. Because you'll look at like every YouTuber and they'll oh, say no, that. I disagree. But like, I think a lot of YouTubers are like, they. I think it's pandering a lot of the time, but they're like, just do whatever you enjoy and it's great. But genuinely, you should do whatever you no, enjoy. And what, no, straight, straight up, I think that's the best piece of advice you could it ever is. give someone ever. Like you've got, there are kids who will go on YouTube and just play with toys. And they've yeah. got like hundreds of thousands yeah. of subscribers. That's my oldest daughter. It's great. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and if, if it's something that you love that you can like kind of pick apart, yeah. that's what I've always loved is yeah. that if, uh, if I have a hobby or an activity that yeah. um, I really get to just dissect, kind of. Yeah. Uh, YouTube's a great way to do it. It is. You know, you're doing it for a product. You're making something, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But the mountain is definitely, to your point, is scary. Oh, my God, yeah. So <laughs> you got to take those baby steps. I mean, we've been at it, Justin, not as long as you have. But, True. Uh, to well, you're th- probably way more dedicated, so you probably put way more hours into this than me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I can attest to Kevin's dedication. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't like to half-ass this kind of thing. He doesn't. But, like, I, I will <laughs> no. say that, like, it, it's great. it is a struggle. And there are times mm-hmm. where, like, and I actually went through this, like, I'll say a week or two ago. Yeah. I was kind of feeling, like, not, like, down to the point of, like, what's the point of it? Resol-? Like, not like that. But yeah. I get down to the point of, like, oh, there's not quite so much growth this this few weeks or something like uh. that. Like, what's not working? And I start, like, really, really, like, picking stuff apart to mm-hmm. the point where it gets tedious. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, I can't. I have to, like, get myself out of that somehow. Well, and ruts I, are real. Yeah, know? ruts happen so often. Like, you go Absolutely. in and out. Like, there are times where you feel really, really great because yeah. you saw some growth that week. I mean, for me, that's what gets me excited. I think for other people, it might not be just, like, content gro- or uh, subscriber growth or anything like that. It might just be, well, I had this cool piece of content. If that's yep. your if that's your highlight of your, your Instagram, your YouTube, whatever, that's great. Yeah. I feel that as well, but I also like to see numbers going up. I like to see that kind of thing. And so for me, that's when I get into a period of like, okay, I feel really, really good and I get really inspired and I really try to like push the content a little bit and really make it better. 
Um, but then I also go down into the valley and have the sure. ruts where I don't feel like doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to make a connection that might not work, but I'm going to try. Do it. Um, okay. It just reminds me of a great piece of acting advice I got once yeah. where if in a scene you like you don't know where the script is going, you don't know what direction like the piece needs to move in, you have to forget that. Don't think about what this mm. thing needs. Think about uh, something that you would do or that you would yeah. enjoy to do. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're, if you're going to act and we'll replace acting with if you're going to make YouTube content, you will only make successful content if you like to do it. Yeah. Like, right. I think back to Smosh. You can't force something. Right. No, yeah. Right. Never force it. It has to be natural. Like, I, I think yeah. back to Smosh when they were really good. Yeah. Like, when they were good. <laughs> That statement. <laughs> Smosh great. is excellent. Yeah. Uh, but they used to make like, they used to make excellent videos. Hey, Ben. Hey, no, that's, that's Balloon Shop. Oh, that's Balloon Shop. Dang How it. dare you? I know. Pardon How me. dare you? Uh, but Smosh used yeah, to be great so. and like make stuff that, I yeah. mean, we were younger and it was all yeah, kind of yeah, whatever, yeah. but they didn't, they didn't like grow very well. No, they didn't. You know, no. they didn't and they didn't last and they like, they stopped enjoying it. Yeah, and was, yep. I'm not saying it was clear. No one knew that, but they broke up. I do like think sometimes it becomes very clear, though. It can. Definitely. I think. I mean, if you're just not excited about anything, like it does yeah. show in some ways. Yeah, it um, can. And like for, I think for us, when I get in a rut because I do the posting on Instagram and stuff, like yeah. you'll notice I don't post as often or something. Well, and like <laughs> you post every day. That's yeah, a I lot. post like two to three times a day usually. It's but, a ton. Like, That's pretty good. I'll just like skip a day if I don't feel right, <laughs> right about it, and like I feel so bad about skipping. But that here's day. the other thing: there are no rules. I know there are no rules. There but are then, some rules, but there are really no rules. But like this in my mind, two oh, or three times say. a day. Go is ahead, the go goal. ahead, finish. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know. I just have this like it's not preconceived notion by any means because you're right. There are no rules, but like I do have like I'll say a goal of yeah. like trying to post a couple times a day sure. and like making sure that the video goes up mm -hmm. at a particular time, which I haven't been great about, but like that kind of stuff. Like I, I think about those things and like, but I enjoy those yeah. things. Like I, I take pride in that kind of stuff. Sure. And Maybe so, I'm too lackadaisical about it. Do what? Lackadaisical? Lackadaisical? Yeah. Lackadaisical? Lackadaisical. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Maybe yeah, I'm too yeah. just, yeah. I, yeah. you know, I'm very much the other way about that kind very of true. stuff. Very um, true. But I think that that balance helps us in particular just relax, a little bit. Relax, You're like the baby. fun side of it. I'm like the dude that says, now nah, we got to get this done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that like even with ruts though, and ruts is another good thing I wanted to just say something on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like being open and honest about that is a really good thing. And like, I know you're on Twitter too. I'm on Twitter and we're kind of on Twitter. <laughs> you know, I've seen a lot of content creators who will, you know, put up there, hey guys, having a rough day, send me pictures of your cats. Or, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, comment with your pictures of your cats. And you know what? Those are, they're kind of funny. I mean, it's, it's not really producing any content for like yeah. the magic creator, but it's still giving them a way to engage in, with their yeah. audience. Yeah. And that's the one thing I wish more people on Instagram honestly did is so much nowadays. And I don't know if it's the algorithm or what, but like four months ago, I would see people seeing it, commenting. And now I feel like I'll be lucky if I see a comment on something. Dude. Okay. Yeah. So we went through a period of like, for me in particular, again, I was, I do a lot of the Instagram stuff, but we were talking about like content streams on yeah. Instagram and we do, we, because of all this, we ended up with things like the uh, card guests and like the artist verses and stuff like that because we were posting yep. cards and we were getting lots of likes, which was great, but there was no real like commenting, interaction, interaction yeah. that kind of right. thing. Right. And so we were like, okay, we sat down and like had a full on discussion. We tried had to, a meeting. We had a meeting. We were at the office. A meeting of two. And, um, <laughs> We we literally just like sat and brainstormed for a significant amount of time and yeah. just tried to come up with ways of like natural engagement from the post itself yeah. and like asking people to guess a card like they have yeah. to comment if they're going to yep. participate in that and yeah. like artists versus which artist did you like better on this particular card yeah. or something like that. That was the best way that we could come up with doing it. And I think that that's a good way to do it. But sure. that's I realized after a while, though, that that kind of content like the card guess really wasn't i mean we would get some comments but the yeah. liking would go down all of a sudden and like all this stuff and i'm like what is going on? Yeah. and so like we ended up 
I, I mean, we can still do it. We just haven't in a long time. Yeah. But like, it's such a balance. Like, you have to figure that stuff out mm-hmm. if you want to. If you want to boost that engagement and stuff, and that, gave my that's a struggle. Break. I really liked coming up with terrible names for your cards. Did you, that it was, was so fun. That was my most fun. I loved when people would comment just silly names. That yeah. was the best. It's good. It's that fun made stuff. it fun. It became part of the game at some point because I started like... <laughs> yeah. You started saying like, or start, just a silly name. Yeah, but... if you don't know the name, give me something dumb. <laughs> say, say something fun. Say something um, fun. I want to uh, look yeah. and see. There was one that I just absolutely loved. I'm trying to think of what the name was. <laughs> Like, I would go you back, picked but out because so I many cards two, that I just absolutely adored, though. Like I was, I'll, I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was great. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it was a bit time consuming to make, I guess, but I usually just binge like forty of them at once. True. And That's then, the thing is, Kevin's a little factory. Honestly, he yeah, can I like am. if he gets an idea, what no matter what it is, he just will like like a dog with a stick. He'll just take yeah. it and run, and you'll never get it back. Well, and I have a tendency to try and template stuff out. Like, yeah. yeah, you find the most efficient way to do things. I do. I really try hard to find the most efficient way to do it. And then, like, yeah. literally, I mean, there was one day where I did 40 or 50, yeah. like, card guesses and then yeah. just had them backstocked. Yeah. And I love that because it was an easy few weeks of just right. posting them. But, like, then I ran out and it was like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do this again. <laughs> right. Um, but I I do. I enjoy that. Pro- like, I, sure. I thrive on that process a little bit more. Yeah. Well, and uh, that's an, another thing is there's a lot of different parts of this creation oh God, thing yeah. we're doing that yeah. you can you can like. And if you don't like production, Justin, to your point, like, you don't have to be as, yeah. uh, I guess, anal about it. Not to. That makes it sound wrong. But <laughs> you, know what, you know what I'm trying to say. Watch Family I'm friendly. Back out with my one take YouTube videos. They're going to be in my car on my way to work. Hey, dude! <laughs> it's all right, just Mark. A, it's time for another drive to work. <laughs> oh my god, guys! I can do that all day. <laughs> you know uh, what that means? His voice. Uh, I did find my card guest card that was my favorite. Hit me. Did you really? Okay, so I'm just gonna give you what I put down. Yeah. And I want you to try to, oh, or god, somebody can comment yes, in yes, the yes, uh, yes, podcast yes, yes, or whatever. Yes, 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 yes. What the card is? Uh, the the choices I gave were tickling gin. <laughs> or for the adults, Juicy the Floozy. Oh, I know which one it is. Do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't. I do. I have no clue. We we'll talk afterwards, but I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if you know it, guess. You had to say Juicy, and I knew it. Uh, <laughs> it's the thickest boy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you might be wrong then. Oh, oh really? Yeah. No way. He is <laughs> not thick. He ain't thick. Nope. <gasps> It's not the moon, Kami? It is not the moon, Kami. Oh, Kami of the Crescent Moon. I'm pretty sure I put Blue Butt Boy on that one. Oh, you know what? You did, if I'm not mistaken. I remember that one. (laughs) And I think I put the thickest boy. I should have. I definitely thought it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Interesting. But yeah, like finding this, not to bring it all back, but I'm going to bring it all back. Um, (laughs) Let's just toot our own horns for a while. (laughs) Yeah. But finding those like constant content streams and stuff like that uh, is it's like tricky. it's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is a challenge, and I think that you do have to truly enjoy it to like yeah. really l- to keep it up. Because I think you it, you can quickly tire yourself out of like making a content stream if you just don't enjoy it. Oh, totally agree. That's fine. What? Nothing. That's fine. Will, what did I do? I'm not gonna make a joke. It's all right. Well, now I want to know. We said keep it up, and I just thought. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to apologize to my wife. Um, yeah, because she listens. <laughs> Sarah. Oh, that's the, that's the other thing. So what I get more than anything else from my family is, are you still doing that? Uh, oh that, yeah, that, I do. Uh, the pocket. What is it about again? <laughs> what do you do, dude? Okay. I have to tell this story because I love when people like ask us random questions. Yeah. A lot of people thought we were gay. Oh, that's true. That, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Because, I mean, we spent a lot of time together. Yeah. And then you, I mean, you got married. You have, yeah. you have a kid now. We spend less and time together. We had together. to break up. We okay. had to break up. We sure. still see each other from time to time. We can't really let each other go. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> Hence the podcast. Hence the podcast. <laughs> I don't even play magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we did have this one kid who, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call him out because he's actually a really nice guy, and he, oh. we actually like did a live stream with him on yeah. Instagram, I think, one time. Yeah, but we did. He like messaged us one time, and he, you could tell he was kind of beating around the bush a little bit. No pun intended. 
Uh, <laughs> you, got, you just get there. Just get there. <laughs> Sorry. He was like, so like, are you and Will like, you know, what did he, he what phrased did, it weird. He phrased it weird. And I don't, he was like, are you guys like together? I was like, we're friends. Like, yeah, He's we're together like, right now. No, but like together and then put like a winky face and we were together. That's right. <laughs> and so yeah. I like showed you and I'm like, Will, how much, how long can I go along with this? And, and you I told s- me no. No, I said instantly. You, yes. You tell him. Yes. I really wanted to go. No, you told me no. Did I? Yes. Otherwise I would so have. Not like me. Oh, That's not like me. That's not like me. I just thought that was really funny. Was Mercury in retrograde? That's not like me. <laughs> But you get interesting, interesting people who will send yeah, you funny Yeah, a lot of things. people thought we were we were a couple. Yeah. And yeah. Just, when my announce. daughter started doing content with me, um, I definitely got a couple of questionable people I had to block. Oh, Ooh. for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. yeah that's and that's like, sketchy. if you go to my thing, it says family friendly is like the very first thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's my, my really nice way of saying creeps get on, keep on moving. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. That's a whole other. That's I'd a... love to do a class for people. I actually did one when I worked um, a little bit farther north, still here in Wisconsin, but mm. we did like a how to appropriately attend a tournament. And basically, Ooh, we that's... didn't send it to kids, we sent it to the schools. Oh. And because um, we were new there and we were doing a lot of stuff with schools, like how to use games and math classes and yeah, things yeah. like that. Cool. But one of the, the big things that we really had to do and we wanted to do because, you know, I didn't want to quote unquote say no smelly kids in the <laughs> store, but that was essentially what we were shooting for. Yeah. And, and so we yeah. actually ran like how to attend a tournament appropriately and not have any issues. And, and a big part of that was actually etiquette. And it, it, it was pretty well received. Like the parents appreciated it a lot more than the kids did, I think. Yeah. But, oh, I bet. You know, yeah. learn those life lessons. Definitely. Dude. I mean, we've all pre-released with uh, someone who just got off their shift. And, yeah. Uh, Will. No, I always. <laughs> if I Sadly, that, that is me now. I am. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I mean, etiquette is a big deal, though. Like, it's sure. kind of nice to hear that somebody took the forethought and made that a thing. No one wants to play with, with a smelly kid. They don't. I mean, to put it bluntly, you're right. Like, nobody wants to, but... I'll yeah. put I'll put up with it because we're all there to have a good time. I don't want to yeah. ruin anyone's parade, but... No, yeah. but, like... No, and that's... And I think that the smelly thing is probably, like, the... I wouldn't say the least... Uh, most pressing issue but the one thing that we really taught people a lot was how to recognize when a conversation was over and that person doesn't have any interest in talking to you oh really offended by it that's interesting Interesting. and and you know i see that a lot on on twitter and you know with with more females getting into the game which is a great thing you know they are having to go through a lot of these situations where they're interacting with people who not only haven't had a lot of interaction in general with people but not yeah. a lot of interaction with people of the opposite sex. Sure, and, yeah. Um, and that's, you know, an issue where we, we, we would often tell people if somebody looks down or turns around, they're looking for the conversation to end and go find somebody else to talk to. And it's mm. not like they don't want to talk to you. We never said to them, they don't want to talk to you. But like, recognize when the conversation's over. Yeah. And that's, you know, even with content creation, like if you're in an argument with somebody, like, know when to just stop yeah, yeah. definitely you know, i have a hard time with those it's not worth it <laughs> no no yeah you have to cut bait um yeah to, to turn a phrase but you definitely do you um, can't yeah. feed into it too much because no. then you just you become the idiot out of all that and like it becomes a big there's deal. nothing to gain like you no, don't there's not. no one's right. ever won a trophy for being the best to, for having the wittiest comeback no. on a board no like yeah. it, t- it took you a day to think of that well and Ch- like like way to go champ the guy works. not to go back to the guy that like was really butthurt about alter versus proxy but like what i found is i didn't have to say anything because yeah. somebody else on our page who likes and supports us yeah, well, that's the shot other thing back too. but that's also kind of part of the problem because then that escalates things and you get things a little bit too well, far but honestly there's a point you uh, it's best i believe just to leave that sort of stuff alone yeah you it's, it's difficult. Weird. Too, it's weird to get involved, and in, like they're not. You can't say like kids stop fighting. No, no, no. You know, <laughs> separate corners. Like you, you can't really do that. <laughs> These are grown ups on the internet. Yeah, well, presumably yeah. some yeah. of them are. Some of them are. But yeah. according to our demographics. Yeah. But you know, data is important. Yeah. Um, true, true. Well, okay. Crap. Last 
question, I guess, and we'll we can keep this short, long, however you want to do it, but we'll kind of go around and say what are our yeah. favorite things about just one of your favorite things about being a creator in the Magic the Gathering world. And Justin, mm-hmm. if you want to lead off, go for oh, it. Oh, sure. I, I am all about comments. Like I love putting something on there, reading people's comments, reacting to the comments. Uh, probably my favorite thing that I do is I try to do it as often as possible on Fridays, but I shuffle my unsleeved commander decks and then I rip a couple. Well, I don't rip physically rip them, but I, I, I rip five, seven cards off the top of the deck and do the, you know, keeper mulligan. Yeah, yeah. But oh. I really try to get a good shuffle because, you know, I, I didn't start sleeving my decks until Mirrodin. Whoa. And wow. again, I played, I played since <clears throat> Ice Age and I, I have a lot of, you know, I have a lot of cards that are older from before then. I yeah. think I just and... heard a thousand nerds go. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I actually have a video. I don't know if I ever posted, but I have a video outside on my front porch. My front porch is like the most rough concrete ever. And it's really good at eating chalk. So it's really good at eating cards. And I, I wrote, I heart EDH on there while my daughters were out coloring. And then yeah. I brought out one of my decks and I, I, I riffle shuffled it. And then I like laid the cards out. And when I lay them out, I kind of slide them. And you can just, Ugh. it's like an ASMR nightmare. You hear the and, <laughs> but like those posts get some of the best comments. Like, and, it, and because I know I'm trolling and I know I'm doing it for the memes or whatever. But, um, you know, like when somebody's like, just end yourself. I, I take that as a compliment because it's like. I, I'm glad that I brought such emotion to your, to yeah, your day. Yes. You're the um, most exciting part about that person's day, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had one get. video and I didn't get to take I didn't get to keep it because I actually had to um but I have a Shu Yun deck, which if card for card priced out in mint condition is roughly three hundred bucks. <laughs> and mm-hmm. one day I, w- I told my daughter, I'm like, hey, let's go for a drive with Shu Yun. And we just like took him and like we recorded video of her holding it out the window and like we we put him on top of things and took pictures of it and like we put it on a drive through uh, stand and stuff like that. Yeah. And at one point she was like holding it and, and waving it out and then she went to hand it back to me and it flew out the window. <laughs> and and so we had to stop and get this deck and I mean, it was it was the funniest thing. the The rubber band held true, though. Not hey, a single yeah, card was go. lost. Hey, dude, some oh, people faithful, cringe dude. just at the rubber band thought. I was always the one who did one around the side and one over the top, yeah, just to keep everybody. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. I had one day. friend who did corner to corner. Ooh, oh. that's fancy. And oh, but it ruined his cards. Oh, yeah. Like, I bet. It, like, it had such a curve on it, and well, I'll never like forget the day that he came yeah. in and he asked, hey, can I play with this in the tournament? And again, this was during Mirrodin Block, um, and he was real fresh, didn't have sleeves yet. He yeah. literally had <laughs> just started playing. He bought, like, three pre-cons, and, and that's what his deck was. Yeah. And his mom had washed it because he, he had it in his cargo oh, hands. Woof. Oh, God. And, the, and it was just decimated. And he's like, it's still 60 cards. Can I play with it? And Friday Night Magic. And I'm like, no, dude, you cannot. Ouch. <laughs> That's rough. That is Here's rough. Here's my deck. I'm I'm judging tonight. You can play with mine. What a guy. Way to be there. <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah. so crazy. It sucks to pull a magic card out of your pocket. Like, well, to be fair, none of the ones I cared about, I'd never put uh, in my yeah, pocket. Yeah, I would never but... put a card I cared about in my pocket, I don't think. I remember but... getting, like, chaff at the end of draft nights or something. Yeah. Like, if I'm throwing jank together, and sometimes yeah, yeah. I'd, they'd make it through the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but... Well, but yes, well, comments. Let's... Comments are comments. my favorite Comments, there thing. you go. Will, thoughts? Hmm. Um, I really like... We've got... I don't Not to toot our own horns again, but I no. think we've got some different videos yeah uh not i'm not gonna say that like everything we've made you should go and watch or but, that I mean, anything I'll we've made it. you should go you and should. watch <laughs> watch my stuff watch it shameless plug so plus. uh but no i don't think that um no, we've made some pretty unique things or things that yeah. i haven't at least seen um our versus videos i really like doing yeah that was um, fun we haven't done one of there's one. a little bit more production than like, I think what we were anticipating in the beginning. Yeah, um, it was a bigger project mm-hmm. than I think we initially gave it credit for. Yeah, and it's it's a different kind of take on it. It's a lot more um, th- 
theatrical, yeah. maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the right word to describe it is, but it's it's just a different way to watch a game of Magic be played. Yeah, um, exactly. And I thought I think that was fun. I think finding new ways to create a video, stuff yeah. like that, have been interesting. Um, we've got some unique stuff for sure. So the the brainstorming, I like that that portion aspect of it. of it. Yep. No, I'm I'm with you there. I mean, I really like coming up with creative mm-hmm. ways to do stuff yeah. whether it's on youtube instagram yeah. whatever i think that's that's the fun part and yeah. then for me like i said the templating and like getting all the post-production stuff that's fun um i also i will say i kind of just really like giving stuff away i know that's no. kind of lame but like <laughs> no oh, that's cool i really like it's just fun. like all right we got a monthly giveaway let's go and yeah. like I like it now because with the uh, proxies, not alters, <laughs> that we can like give those away pretty, not all the time by any means because we don't want to wear it out, but like we we have access to those in such a way yeah. that we can like start giving those out as smaller Instagram giveaways just yeah. on a weekly basis. Like yeah. if we wanted to, we can just start throwing those That's out cool. for people. And like it's a fun way to do it because then not only you that interaction comes pretty naturally when you sure. do the giveaway stuff yeah. because people are excited about the giveaway. So it's like an icebreaker for that conversation to start happening. Sure. And like, I mean, that's how you start meeting people. And I think Justin is a prime example of like how we got to meet somebody mm-hmm. that we would not have yeah. normally met because we had a Instagram that focuses around magic. And yeah. like, that's I think that's cool. I agree. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really like that. I dig it. The community is... Cool a bit divided and that's a bit of a frustrating thing sometimes but well any community is any community sir. is that's to bring true. that full round <laughs> we are not a monolith uh yeah uh so really quick because we are kind of running pretty long on time we're hitting an hour <laughs> let it be long baby long All and right. strong it's fine. <laughs> keep it going that's fine with me uh if you guys want to keep it going we can we can talk about uh wizards as a whole how we feel about their decisions over the last few years. I know a few years ago there was a whole lot of negative stuff well, going I around. Just, I really want to hear what Justin has to say about that. I felt like you uh, you have more opinions. You've been around longer. You've seen more changes. That's I have fair. lots of opinions. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so, so which thing do you want my opinion on? I'll, do you have a list? I don't have a list. Okay. Um, I mean, I have a list in my brain. <laughs> what? Okay, well... What? Let's do like a a polar thing. What is your favorite thing about Wizards and your least favorite? Okay, so my favorite thing about Wizards uh, is actually their supplemental products. Oh. And okay. I I really loved, with the exception of that dumb board game. Oh yeah, <laughs> that sucked. And and to an extent, Puzzle Quest. <laughs> Never played Which, it. Okay, don't. It's don't even bother. It's a waste of a down. I mean, in my opinion, unless you really love puzzle games, in which case, hey, Magic has a puzzle game. And, um, but yeah, like the supplemental products when Plane Chase and the original Arch Enemy came out, like those were my favorite products that they had released in a very long time. Okay. Because. It was very much so opposite of what my least favorite thing about what Wizards does. And it's so funny because today, uh, Mark Rosewater in his article pointed out the one thing that drives me absolutely bonkers about magic. And he was like, well, this is what we do in every single one. And um, <laughs> your morrow is so good. <laughs> so I, I, I just want to toot this. Just, this is me tooting my, my horn. I, for the longest time, wanted to be a Muppeteer. Yeah. And so yes. I got really good at doing voices, and the more comical and cartoonish a voice already is, the better I am at it. And so that's like, excellent. At, at the at the LGS, I always am just I'll always go on my Morrow rants, and I'll do it in his voice. And I'm not picking on him because he does have a lot of talent. He brought a lot of stuff. He made some of my favorite sets. But the thing that contrasts what I love the most, the supplemental sets, is how they have such a tried and true template to every single set that that becomes very boring to me. Okay. How do you mean? Expand on that. So in in the article, he pointed out very clearly where at Common, green always will have a giant growth effect, will always have a naturalized effect, will always have Mm. a uh, land fetch effect, and then always have a fog effect. 
Okay. And the way that they vary, and every color has these things. Like sure. Every yeah, yeah. red card. Mm-hmm. Every like there'll a... be a red card that hits creatures, players, yeah. and then both at common. Yeah. And, and so like, ever since he became the head designer, this is how it's been. And so it's rinse, wash, repeat. And then depending yeah. on the setting, they will. I'm I'm already trying to not slip into my Morrow voice because <laughs> naturally I just want to whenever I talk about it. But. <laughs> Um, based on the, the plane of it, they'll alter what the card does. So, like, for example, we'll have shock on one plane, but then in Zendikar, they made it be more of a landfall. Or right. in Mirrodin, yeah. they had the metalcraft thing attached to it. Yeah. And, and so, like, they make these cards that are functionally the exact same card every single time. Yeah. But then it just has its own planar spin on it. Sure. And I hate hate that it drives me absolutely bonkers just print the same dang card like if, if that's what you want to do like sometimes sure but like all the time no and so these supplemental products they don't have any rules like that i see yeah and i love that because it reminds me very much of how old magic was where you'd open a booster pack and maybe you got a card that referenced anti they didn't care they were like hey you've got an anti card now Play it if you don't want. If not, congratulations, you've got a binder holder. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's my opinion on that. Sorry, that was real long-winded. No, no that's, that's great. Good. Um, I do... I, I, I see where you're coming from, and I have a small counter-argument, though I don't think that it justifies it, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So, I'm uh, interested. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so, on one hand, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, and I'm with you on the fact that that gets very, very boring. Um, I don't like seeing functionally the same card in every set. However, when it, to your point with like the planar spin on it all and like the keyword changes and things like that and the different little effects that they do, I think it does serve a minimal purpose of, of demonstrating the mechanic of the set in a very simple way. And I think that to a new player coming into the set or even just a player who might have been around for a long time just first seeing the set, I think that there's some utility to doing something like that. Something simple. Something simple, but a still different card. And I I also think, too, in the standard environment at least, uh, when they have similar effects but with a different card name or a different keyword or something like that, that provides you a build opportunity and standard of having functionally very similar cards built into your deck that are not Very necessarily true. the exact same card, yeah. and that gives you that option. Instead of four copies of Shock, you can have eight very similar right. copies. You know what I'm saying? And so that yep. affects deck building a little bit. Again, those are counterpoints. I do agree, though, it gets very boring. Well, it, it kind of goes into, like, once you peek behind the curtain and see the wizard and his machines, like, you know, it is a game at the end of the day, yeah. and uh, I think for balance purposes, a lot of those things have to come into play. Yeah, um, I think so, too. Like, I think, Very true. I think the limited especially would be a lot different if green, or well, I'll say this: if red didn't have like it's as many direct damage sort of things. Yeah. If they kind of took it easy, um, or if green didn't have its like naturalized effects or a giant growth thing. You have to wonder at some point: do they just run out of ideas? <laughs> oh, I so, mean, yeah, sure. I mean, one of the things I thought was really interesting that I do like that they have been doing recently in terms of like the standard product is that mm-hmm. they're making the common cards more exciting. Yes. Oh yeah. They and are. I, I love that. Like I'm finding myself more excited about some of the commons half the time, especially in war of the spark War of the spark had amazing commons. Yeah, it did. War of the spark was fun. And was so I, I really like that. And I like the fact that they're kind of pushing that boundary a lot more. I kind of think like, because before we would find like something big, like we'll we'll take Mirrodin for example, and I didn't play a lot during Mirrodin. I collected a little bit, but not too much. Um, okay. It was an artifact themed set, obviously, mm-hmm. and they pushed the artifact thing a lot. And they had different mechanics that were built around artifacts, but they didn't mm-hmm. push design too much in terms of like well, we came back with like card frames, for instance, and like just like visual things and stuff like that. Like I love that they're pushing some of that kind of a thing. Or they'll mm-hmm. pick, like, in War of the Spark, they pick Planeswalkers and then just went ham with Planeswalkers. Like, sure. they're kind of pushing different stuff than they used to, where they used to just put different keywords on stuff that did stuff. Instead, they're 
they're now making brand new card types that are like sagas and stuff like that. Like that's a whole other thing that we'd never seen before. And like, that's pretty sure. cool. Um, I, I just like that they're pushing random things like that where we, we saw some pushes before, but it was like with pre existing things like artifacts we had before. It's just, there's wow. now a lot of them. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of actually have a, a weird tinfoil hat theory about oh. some of all these new cards. Okay. So, uh, I listened to, uh, a podcast recently yeah. about power creep, mm. about power spikes and all that stuff. Um, and about how you can't just always print stronger, stronger cards because you'll break your game and stuff like that. Right. Um, it was Mara's podcast and it was very informative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, from that, I kind of wondered what if they're, uh, what if they're just making all of these new cards because we're, we're kind of at a point where we're, everything is getting kind of too strong. So yeah. we have to go in a few different directions. Yeah. And like yeah. Model it down. I don't know. That's just something I thought about. No, that might be a thing. At um, any rate, okay. um, uh, all this to say about wizards, I think that the the biggest problems I have with wizards are simply that there's not a great way to tell, other than card bannings, yeah, um, that they're hearing what their players say. And this is just my opinion. Um, there's there's not a great way to, at least on my end, on our end, to to see that like, all right, you're you're um, concerns have been noted we hear you and we'll like address it or something like that like the card quality was a big thing for me yeah um their we, transparency is not great yeah thank you for making to sum that up thank you um, for making few word do trick yeah well good job they just went yes. ham i mean <laughs> the card quality was an issue for so long yeah. and they just didn't say anything and right. then like three years later they come out with an article that says well we're working on it and it's like right, that didn't really do it for me like I, that's not yeah. i don't think that that's good yeah. enough um, that's my biggest issue um and i yeah. do think some of it is like which i don't think a lot of people take into account and i don't want to harp on it by any means but like they're a few years ahead of us in terms of production sure. quality and like printing of cards and sure, stuff sure, like they're sure, a little sure. bit ahead of where we are now yeah yeah and they're so living you have, in the future yeah i mean <laughs> basically basically like you can't expect them to fix throne of eldraine when it's coming out in like a couple months like it doesn't sure. work well, that way yeah they can't really balance they it can't at this point. fix what's going to be coming up yeah. in january or whenever because right. it's probably already in production right now <laughs> like they've got all the cards set That's a good point for sure yeah but like you can still acknowledge that there is a problem yeah. and say as of this date we'll work towards yeah. you know like just some transparency would be good, but I don't think yeah. a lot of people take into account yeah. production time. Um, Boys, maybe this this needs to be a sequel podcast. I was going to say we might I have to pull so. you in again, Justin. Um, there's there's way more we can talk about. We're, oh, we're just yeah. we're tickling the surface. Exactly. Say nothing for scratching. This is just a mere poke. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'll have to bring my scratchy gloves or something. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Um, oh. Well, yeah. Okay, so we are going pretty long, so I think we will wrap it up. Good, but good, good. Uh, before we do, again, Commander 2019 giveaway. Please make sure you enter that. Subscribe on YouTube, comment Commander 2019 yep. on any video, uh, winner Monday, uh, mm -hmm. August 26th. Boop, boop. Uh, and you get to pick your deck, so pretty cool. Justin, thank you so much, man. You were the official first guest on uh, It Resolves. We've never done it. It was a before. pleasure. I had a lot of, a lot of fun. It was a good time. Uh, we definitely appreciate having yeah, you here. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we truly do mean we need to do a sequel. I don't I know if it'll agree. be the next one or not, but we will definitely be doing this again because your your opinion is valued heavily. Oh, um, thank you. So I know you just want me for my Morrow voice. That's, that's it. That's, that's all it, it is. You dude. bring a certain panache to the podcast. And I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. Well, just just wait. I'll I'll do one uh, drive to YouTube video and I'll, <laughs> I'll slip it in there somewhere. <laughs> Oh, please do. Everyone sub for that. Please sub yeah. for that. Um, That's what I'm going to call it, too, I think. I'm just going to call it Drive for YouTube. <laughs> Drive for YouTube. That's perfect. That way, like, all the people who are like, huh, what's the big uh, social justice warrior thing I can look at today? And then... <laughs> Drive for YouTube will come up, and I'll create a, a GoFundMe and everything. It'll just yes. be for the memes. Yeah, yeah. Buy some Google though. keywords. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's awesome. I love it, uh, man. Great. Thank you seriously so much. Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody listening, go follow Red Zone Gaming on uh, Instagram. Truly awesome, fun stuff on there. Uh, and yeah. Justin obviously is a great guy. So um, 
yeah, I think there's nothing I'm else gonna... that I want to add. Justin, you good? I'm, I'm good. good. All right, Will? Yeah. All right. I'm chilling, baby. You chilling, baby. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to get out of here. My name right. is Kevin. My name is Will. And you Dude, are I'm Justin. Justin. Yes. All right. This has been Earth's House. Earth's House. Earth's House. Earth's House.